wanted to open with, you know, this session is focused around thinking about uh, Australian future cities, you know, the cities we are creating for our children and our children's children, and very much that view around what will our cities look like in 50 years. And that important piece that I think has been touched on, and, and Kevin George from Dexas just said it in the video then, you know, the decisions that we make now will determine the future that we have. So how do we get from A to B? If that's what the future looks like or we want it to look like, what do we need to be doing between now and then? Now, remembering as well, you've got the opportunity to contribute in and direct this session in whichever way you would like. Please feel free to text in any questions that you've got or at any point, put your hand up. We'll come to you with a microphone and you can ask anything of our panelists that you'd like. But James, I might kick off with you. Would love your opening response to what it was that Greg shared and I guess your thoughts around where Australian cities will be in 50 years. Okay, thank you. Um, well, well, certainly, Professor Clark, we got our money's worth, I think, today. <laughs> there was an immense amount of uh, information there, and if you're ever going to do a, an urbanism degree, you could probably just go through that slide deck and elaborate a little bit more on the points. And what, what that really says to me is there was a massive amount of information there, and uh, I think that's the big challenge right now. It's, it's been able to step back uh, and take a macro view, which was really what that presentation gave to me. Um, it was that macro view. Uh, our ability to step back and actually have a look at what levers we need to pull, um, you know, Australian capital cities uh, to remain competitive. And, um, you know, from, from that perspective, um, I think the, the, the big challenge uh, for our cities is our, our location and our geographical location and how to attract talent um, and attract the necessary uh, infrastructure to, to deliver a comp competitive cities into the future. Great. Thanks, James. Nikki? Yeah, thank you so much. It was a fantastic presentation. I guess lots to do, just as, as James said. Two things came out of that for me as specific challenges that we, we still face. There's a lot that we do right, we've heard, but there's also a lot of challenges. And the two things I thought about, one is about cooperation and collaboration across different levels of government. And I think that's something we really struggle with. Um, we, we see we want to have one little thing over here and we don't take this holistic view. Um, it's a shame we lost a dedicated federal minister for cities um, earlier this year, but there is, you know, the possibility through processes like the COAG to get that collaboration and cooperation happening much better, and somebody needs to really start that agenda and, and, and move with it. And the second real big challenge is, is around capital attraction, whether it's government financing, PPPs, venture capital, again, all of those things don't particularly happen well in Australia, and I think that, that's, again, where a focus of government policies can be as to how do we make those things work better. Thanks, Nikki. Graham? Uh, yes, well, uh, I was taken by uh, Mr. Clark's uh, commitment and as well echoed by the remarks from the Dexas executive about the uh, imminent, unavoidable densification of Australian cities. Um, there's plenty of research going back, probably you'd agree, Professor, over 30 years or 40 years, um, that uh, cities are the engines of, of national economies, not nations. Uh, Jane Jacobs work on uh, cities and the wealth of nations and more contemporary research that says the denser a city is, the richer it is in terms of in economic terms and per capita wealth, which isn't to say, of course, that the dense cities are always the most livable cities, uh, quite the contrary. So I think our challenge uh, here in Australia is to make sure we get the planning right to do densification well. Uh, and uh, and uh, that, I think, is, is a critical challenge, as Nikki mentioned, uh, for the coordination of different levels of government um, and, uh, and across uh, different uh, government agencies to ensure that that planning is done. We have a long and sad tradition in Australia of short-termism when it comes to long-term infrastructure planning. We've seen a lot of that in New South Wales. Uh, we're starting to correct that by preserving corridors uh, that uh, formerly should have been preserved but weren't, which means that new infrastructure is vastly more expensive than it, sh than it would otherwise have been uh, if we had done proper long-term planning. Um, and uh, the cities that I think get planning right uh, are going to be the ones that will uh, create the environments for uh, greater economic prosperity. Great. Thanks, Graham. Ignata? Thank you. Um, uh, I think there is a lot of information which is new to us all, but also some that we already have a hunch about. And one of them is well, the importance of cities. And cities are really the drivers for the future. And, and nations are not as important any longer. And, and I think we'll really need to take that into account when we are working with, with the development. 
And, and then the growth of cities, I don't think it's either densification or new cities or new city districts. We need both because in the next 20 years, the, the urbanization will lead to that 60% of the cities or city districts we have then has not yet been built. Mm. And, and here we have a challenges in, in uh, providing the multidisciplinary work and, and planning and see to that the cities are efficient and that we're using the best technologies. And, and that's really important and, and how to, to learn from each other and also learn from, from different sectors. When we look at uh, autonomous vehicles, for instance, which is the, the new thing everybody is talking about, well, there's a lot of ethics in that. And, and then we could learn, for instance, from healthcare systems because they have already been delivering uh, a lot of ethics, uh, thoughts and, and uh, strategies for a long, long time. But, but the most important thing, I think, is is the role of governance and, and the need of cooperation, which was one of your last slides. And uh, we will not be able to deliver the cities we want, the livable, attractive, competitive, sustainable cities we want, if we don't work better together. And we need to find out how to do these kind of cooperations in much better way. So I think almost all of you there have caught out some point around coordination, collaboration, planning and this mindset shift between how do we move it from the short termism, often reinforced by political cycles and, and the like, to the longer term. Professor Clark, I'd be intrigued from your perspective. You get the opportunity of working not only very much with an Australian context in this area, but a global one. The key elements to good planning and the things that you're seeing put in place, particularly, I guess, in cities where you've seen uh, a great pick up in momentum towards really being able to lay good foundations. What are the key tenets of that? Well, I think there's probably two things that really matter. The first thing is that you have to have a vision of a long-term future that takes into account all of these trends, all of these opportunities, the competitive position. You have to have a shared vision, and you have to really develop that over time. It has to be evidence-based. It has to be agreed. Then the second thing is you have to remove all the barriers to working in partnership, and that means you've got to uh, remove regulatory or fiscal systems that encourage you to do things against the plan. You've got to uh, recognize that, um, for example, the obvious one is infrastructure provision. If you have a long-term vision, but you continue to invest in infrastructure which is off vision, you will never achieve your vision. So you have to align everything that happens in government at different tiers, whether it's the fiscal system, the infrastructure investment, the services with the overall vision. And you have to, of course, recruit and motivate the citizens. You have to cr uh, create momentum. You have to have catalysts that people uh, find are believable. But this shift towards long-term planning is now happening. We are in a cycle where this is much more common now than it was. And in countries which are much less civilized and democratized than Australia, they've figured out how to do joint long-term planning between public and private sector and between different tiers of government. So it's very important to go for this. And maybe the city deals is a mechanism for moving towards that. So let's open up that city deals conversation because we've had a question come through saying what are the key ingredients to a good city deal in this piece around long-term planning. James, I was just speaking to you um, inside of stage and you were saying we're seeing this sort of model starting to be approached in different pockets of Australia. Talk to us about what you're seeing. Well, I mean, c city deals right now, there's, there's three city deals that are proposed in Australia. The first one is Townsville for, uh, for the Cowboys Stadium. And the second one is in Western Sydney for a, around the second airport in, in Sydney. And then the third is down in Launceston, which is the expansion of the uh, university down there. And, and really the, the tenants of it, this is, it's the government moving away from being a funder uh, and just a funder. So it's actually uh, regions and cities. Uh, it's important to say regions as well. Um, essentially bidding for work based on the broader economic um, multiplier that the investment's going to make. Um, and then it's then been in a position to, to monitor um, how that investment is returning uh, growth, um, which is a multiplier on the investment that's been made. Now, th this is really complex because not all city deals are going to be the same. So a city deal for a stadium in Townsville um, is going to be different to, and how you monitor the success of that. So that may be around uh, activation of the city centre. It might be around, um, in, you know, inviting tourist economy into, uh, and, uh, in, and dollars into, into Townsville. Um, plus also lifestyle benefits. 
But uh, that'll be different to, say, a city deal for, for Western Sydney Airport, which is really going to be around growth and provision of gr uh, jobs um, to our, the dire need which we have is provision of jobs in Western Sydney to actually rebalance the city. So it's around monitoring um, and rather than just government handing out funds. Uh, are, those, are those actually uh, city deals of the kind that the professor is talking about? Are they between state government and local local government? And, Fed, and are, there, are there funding mechanisms coming out of them through the foregoing of various taxes and so on, which I think is the essence of, of, of your city deal?